Frank Neat can absolutely tailor the, the, the needs of the client into every banjo that he builds. Frank's by far uh, superior as far as I'm concerned in uh, making banjos. Uh, I don't think you can beat what he does. In making a banjo, from start to finish, it normally takes us like two weeks to do one complete. We uh, do a lot of repair work, do a lot of, uh, we do a lot of necks, banjo necks, and put them on different pots for people. And what I mean by pot is it's the round part on the banjo. You've got, you've got the wood rim, and then you've got the tone ring that fits on the wood rim. You've got the flange that fits on the, the wood rim. Then you've got the tension hook, the head, and you put all that together and that's, that's what the pot is. And then of course we can do the pots and all that. We can build a whole complete banjo and we do a lot of repair work, do fret work, and uh, then about anything that needs to be done on one, well, we can do it. There she is, that's the one from the TV show. Got Frank's name here. The Turtle Man loves arrowheads, so here are the arrowheads, and actually the hopes and dreams feathers, you know how Ernie always makes the muscle and he'll show you his tattoo? Ricky duplicated the tattoo on the third fret of this banjo. And of course the Turtle Man at the top, and I forget how many different pieces of green and black abalone are in this turtle. The turtle's actually got eyeballs and toes. Ricky Neat is the man. My son Ricky, he cuts the inlay and does all that by hand. I used to do inlay myself, yeah, I, and I taught my son how to do it, taught Ricky how to do it. And uh, he just, he's got a natural knack for doing inlay, he just, he's good at it. And then whenever I got old enough that it was hard for me to see, well then that was handy for him to do it too. And I'm, I'm not saying this because He's my son, but he's the best that I have ever seen. When he was growing up, he would help from time to time, but then about 20 years ago, he come back here and he started working with me full time. And uh, he decided this is what he wanted to do, and that's when I got him started doing inlay and, and showed him the basics, and he can do everything that I can. He has, he, is, he does the inlay work and, and cuts the mother of pearl and inlays it, and then he does most of the finish work. And we've got our own jobs that we do, and we're, I can do some of mine faster than he can his, and then he can do some of his faster than I can. I guess I was probably seven or eight years old and I heard a guy he was he come to our house and he was playing and from that time on I liked the banjo that got me hooked on it and then of course I got acquainted with Earl Scruggs and and the way that I met Ralph Stanley we was playing staff band at Bean Blossom Indiana and we'd played several different shows with him up there and I was talking to him one day and asked him about building him a banjo. And he said, well, I don't know why you hadn't already. So I asked him, I said, well, what do you like? And he said, well, I, I like a small neck and I like a bright sound. And so I built him one and put his name on the fingerboard on it. And he called me a couple of months later and said, if you build these, I'll sell them. We'll call them the Stanley Tones. So I was the first one I built for him in 1975. The way that we'd done these, Ralph would want me to, to build 50 of a certain kind, and then he would tell, that was what his selling point was, we're just doing 50 of these. So we'd done 50 of the nickel-plated ones, and then we'd done 50 of gold-plated ones, and then uh, we've done some 40th anniversary, and then we've done 50 of the 50th anniversary, 
And uh, before we got the 50th anniversary done, well, he wanted to do something else, so we done a signature model. And we done quite a few of those. And then I enjoy, you know, if, if I do one for somebody and they're on the Opry or somebody on a TV show or something like that playing it, well, then I, you know, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure to know that I had done that and it was good enough that they would play it. that I've let work on my, on my banjos. He can do the complete banjo, or he can make the neck, or he can refret, he can just do the inlay. He tries to get the best wood to go in the instrument to the banjos, and then the best tone rings, the metal, and the whole bit. And there's just a lot to uh, making one that's setting it up, and making a new one sound like an old one, which is very hard to do and Frank can get very close. I think Frank is the best, as far as I'm concerned. For it to be a Frank Neat banjo, we pick the best of everything that's available. 